Hello everybody and welcome back to another awesome episode of Microsoft Flight Simulator and today I've got some awesome news for content creators and people who just like to have you know that cool replay function. The scenes that you just saw here in the intro that was a replay and it was a replay provided by a very awesome tool called FS Playground and it's this guy right here and this thing is absolutely fantastic now I've only been working with this for about a half an hour so I'm still very very green with it myself so please keep that in mind as I'm going through this as I may trip over my words a little bit but hopefully I'll be able to demonstrate a lot of the really awesome functionality for example I'm really worried that I left my uh, wallet back at the parking uh, I really don't feel like taxing all the way back to the runway This thing is awesome. So let's get into the basics that I'm aware of thus far. So let's start, I'm just gonna sort of work it by each of these menus and try to work my way down based on what I know, okay? So obviously you have a replay button here which allows you to very quickly switch back. When you tap the show controller button, it shows that brings up this menu here. Now I haven't seen a way to actually close this menu if you choose to. Uh, it seems to, once you launch it, you launch it. It does move independently, which is nice. So you can move it down if you only have the single screen. I take them off screen. Um, but, you know, obviously for this video, I'll leave it on. If you hit the X here, it closes the whole shebang out. So I don't think you can close this once you do it. However, your move aircraft button you have, that's going to take based on whatever you have currently selected. You can save these locations. One and two that you can see here, these were not here when I started. They were something else it comes with a pre-existing library as you see here when you click on these for example if we select this one go to details um, it gives you the longitude latitude coordinates lets you know what the uh, actual determination of it is or location or uh, identity of it determination what uh, <laughs> and then tells you what heading altitude and airspeed that you'll be at when you launch there a lot of them have youtube links that actually take you to Take you to a video that demonstrates where you're at. That is really fun. What the odds are? But anyway, you can see the ice runway out there. So uh, pretty much all of these um, built-in libraries have that. You can create your own, whether that be you know from the simulator. Um, but anyway, a, a nice way to be able to say, well, where is this again? Where is this actually going to take me? You have that options. You can get the aircraft nav aids. I'm gonna. Well, I guess I won't save it. And you can see this is what all the aircraft's current navigates are set to. If we were to scroll down here, uh, let's see here, where's my nav radio? Oh, that's right. Let's get helps if we're on the right screen. Well, here we can do this. Uh, nope, because it's not picking it up. Come, mouse, come on. Microsoft Flight Simulator has been acting really dumb today, and it's pissing me off. Um, anyway, so if we go to Navcom. There's our radios, okay, and so if we bring that tool back up, you can see nav 1, 115.5, 115.5, um, and the same thing with, let's see here, it says nav 2 at 110.8, oh yeah, nav 2, yep, sure as heck. So you have that op options, the course settings, you know, if you have course 1, course 2, I think they're both set to 324 right now because of this guy here, no, that's at 349, okay, so I'm not sure where I got 324 from. The only thing I can think of is 324 is a course heading for this nav aid. But uh, we'll have to play around with that later. Again, I haven't been playing with this very long. But let's talk about the replay functions of it. Um, and then I'll show you guys how to create a location here. So um, we'll get to back to that in a second because it is pretty neat. So actually, let me back up here. Um, the trim is set to zero when the aircraft is moved. Uh, landing gears are automatically extended when the aircraft is moved. And then um, let's see here, erase on move, erase any recording track memory on the air when the aircraft is moved. And then the fast move, use faster method of moving the aircraft does not work well when the plane is on the ground. So keep that in mind. Um, I don't know what could be faster than what we just saw, but <laughs> it's pretty quick. Um, it's got a couple different options. Move the aircraft to the touchdown position and attitude. So this is going to be literally at the point that the air that the uh, yeah aircraft touches the ground. Okay, and then the reset landing resets the landing rating and position. 
Touchdown Freeze. Um, from what I was reading the documentation, this was actually meant as a silly feature, and they decided that it was funny enough that they just kept it there. And basically what it is is as soon as the aircraft touches the ground, the sim pauses. It just freezes the frame. Um, so I thought that was kind of neat. Um, I haven't messed around with that yet at all. Uh, library, um, I haven't messed with this yet. I'm just going to have to come back to that at some point. Going into the replay section, um, when recording is active, the um, recorder here is actually recording what we're doing in the sim for this max duration of time and then it will reset. This is as long of the duration as it can store at any given time based on the recording interval in milliseconds. The less milliseconds, the more demand on your PC. However, the clearer the image, you know, less stuttering. However, at 40, which is the default here, I haven't seen any issue yet. So that may change in time. That may be something I have to play around with. It gives you what its current measurement versus error rating is. Now, it shows me that I've had 499 errors. Um, I haven't, let's see, let's reset. Yeah, okay, there we go. Um, I, I haven't really had any problems at all with it yet. Uh, current index, that's the timing index for or the frame count. The thing that this thing does is my understanding is it records each individual frame uh, versus as a, a long video, for example, like an MP4 or something like that. Um, now I could have that little backwards. When you see the FS recording here, it means that it is actually recording the activity. If we go into replay, you'll see it in replay mode, okay? Now let's go ahead and come back out. Let's go back into recording mode. Now you can use everything from here. You can save a track if you want to save a track. Now I haven't tried these two out yet. Um, so meaning that I don't know if I can close the sim down, come back into it later, and then boom, reload it, and whether or not that's going to load the aircraft and all that, we're going to have to play around with that later. Um, there's a low FPS mode. Try to compensate for low FPS. Activate, you know, if your FPS are below 60. Pretty much everybody is on FS. But again, I don't have that turned on. Haven't seen any issues yet. Um, replay, flaps, spoilers, gear, and, uh, gear controls, etc. So obviously in your replays, if you're on your approach and your gear comes down, you want your gear to come down in the replay, right? This is how you're going to get those cool uh, wing views of the flaps coming down while you're on the approach, right? Everyone likes to sit behind the wing. You know, that's the best part of riding passenger is watching the flaps come down and the thrust buckets open. Um, but anyway, um, it's got an alternative replay method. I haven't tried this yet. But this seems pretty interesting. I'm going to have to do a little bit more detail on that. Like I said, feel free to pause the screen as these come up because they don't stay up very long. I wish that they would leave those up a bit longer. Um, these I haven't messed with yet. I, I, I don't know what these are yet, so I'm not going to talk on those too much. Um, obviously, you've got some customization features always on top. That will leave this tool always on top. This handy for single monitor users. Um, Move aircraft with gear up. All of these I unchecked because I a I don't want the landing rating in mine yet. Um, but then these three options, I was a little vague on, um, so I'm leaving those until I've had a chance to play play with it a little bit. Um, unhide with the brakes button, player opacity. You know you can set all that. Delay movement. What is this? Oh, cool. So what this is, is let's say you're moving from, like right now we're in Tucson, Arizona. Let's say if the next selection that we move the aircraft to is in, I don't know, New York, JFK, right? Um, as you guys all know, as we enter new areas, the scene has to render, right? Um, so what this is, is a time in seconds that the aircraft is going to sit above the location that you sent it to until the terrain down below can be rendered. So you can set this for, it looks like the default is eight seconds. You could set this for 30 seconds, etc., based on what your computer's performance is. I was actually looking for this area. That's kind of cool. Um, I was curious about that. <clears throat> um, and then obviously you can set your different color themes. You know, if you wanted to change the theme of the, of the menu, you can. You know, you can customize it however you'd like. Ooh, you can customize it however you'd like. So here, I'm just throwing colors out now. I'm just going to have to play around with it later. I'm just curious what all of these do. Those are the buttons. So you guys are seeing it right here. So take note of this. Oh, that's the text. All right, that ain't going to work for the text. <laughs> let's get that out of the way. Oh, I can't while that's up. Okay. Now let's do it. All right, that's interesting. Okay, so I'm just going to put it back up there for now. Anyway. So some really neat features with it. It's very, very simple to use as far as I can tell thus far. Um, you can change during the replays, you can change your weather settings. 
Hello. Why are we stuck in here? Oh, we're zoomed. We can change the weather settings if we wanted to. We can do anything we want during the replay. Um, camera manipulation, you name it. You can manipulate any of the environment as you normally would be able to while using this software. While? Gosh, I'm just talking like a fool today. So let's try a couple more things here. Let's grab a takeoff. Let's, let's check out a takeoff together. And let's say, well, here, we'll just do it as is for now. So the first thing I'm going to do is as the aircraft begins to roll, so I don't want anything before the rolling, it takes the engine a second to power up, get moving. And so now I'm going to hit the erase track button. Let's just power up and roll. coming up. Here's our positive rate. And so now, let's go into replay mode. And if we want to from here, we can even pause it. change our time of day maybe throw some clouds in there do an overcast that's more accurate for today go to the external view set our camera where we want right so here we go and the replay is going while I'm recording, and I'm not seeing any problems here. here behind the sound. If we wanted to, we get sorry. screen at a typical location, get your screenshot if you want, for example, like this kind of a one, I think I'll take a screenshot of this, there we go, um, Alt F1 for those of you who have NVIDIA cards, um, but, uh, and then we can unpause again, or I can rewind it back a hair, yeah, I missed that spot that I wanted, maybe I wanted just when the nose came up, and then when you're done, unpause it. Hopefully you guys catch the gist here. You can use this at any point. Just keep in mind a couple of things right off the bat. A, it's still pretty early. Notice that the pause, it keeps going when you're in replay mode. The pause will not stop the replay. But once you get to here, so what's happening now is we've gotten to the end of the recording. Okay, so what we want to do now is switch back into the cockpit and then hit the record button. And we're back in control of the aircraft. Now, from what I can tell so far, what it will not record is, like for example, just throwing something out here real quick. 
if at the back of the runway we change the barometric pressure when we go back to the runway you know we use the recording and rewind it the barometric pressure won't change it doesn't manipulate the cockpit instruments um it can record certain things like we saw nav radios things like that but then others it can't and i haven't quite figured out all the limitations to that however i have tested it on the approach works just fine i was able to rewind it try my landing again um, i've tested it obviously with flaps and gears all those work just as they say it does um, this is a really awesome process so the other thing that i can check while we're here is let's try saving this track right so we're going to save a track i'm going to pick a location let's go to recordings uh, let's see here, FS replay, and let's call this, uh, I don't know, tracks. <laughs> let's be original with it. And then I need to move, oh, I can't. Let's move this guy out of the way then. Uh, we'll just call it one, okay? And then now, I'm kind of curious what happens. Let's restart the sim. All right, so aircraft's loaded. And so now what I'm gonna do is bring back FS. Let's go load track. Let's hit open. <laughs> I'll be dang. I'll be dang. That's kind of neat. It really is. All right. Well, you guys have it there. Okay, so I ended up having to do this part over. I didn't think about the external sounds of the engine deafening me out. Um, so a couple of really neat things right off the bat is, as you can see, obviously the replay works. It's a really neat way to, as I pointed out in the text, if you guys saw it, um, store your video tracks for later viewing without having to actually store video files. But it's got one other really cool advantage that I'm gonna have to test further with. At the end of this replay, I decided to check it. And you know, obviously when the replay is over, you have the record button. I clicked on the record button, jumped back in the cockpit, and I was able to take control of the aircraft again. Um, so it, it literally just recreates what the last known parameters were. Now I'm going to have to see what the in, uh, extent of those parameters are, whether or not storage flight plans, things like that. But I mean, worst case scenario, you could always re-enter a flight plan from your previous location, etc., things like that. You know, you might have to do some saving. Um, but this could be an interesting way to save your flights midway and then pick them up later on um and maybe a little bit more efficiently in the way microsoft flight simulator does it natively but anyway guys let me know what you think down below i'm really curious to see if you guys enjoy this one and have a good night